Good afternoon and welcome back. I'm Bill Addis with Amherst Financial Training and welcome to the first in our series to provide education on capital markets topics that are pertinent to today. And there's certainly no more important topic in today's economy than our central bank, than our Federal Reserve. And what amazes me as I train in this topic worldwide and even focusing here in the U.S., it amazes me how misunderstood the Fed is. People think they know it, but they really don't. For example, in talking about the Fed today, I want to start off by acknowledging, surprising to many people, the Fed is not a part of the government. It's important to understand that the Fed here in the U.S., our Federal Reserve, is actually a corporation. It is a for-profit corporation. And in fact, the Fed has made money as a corporation every year. Now, last year alone, our Fed had a profit of $86 billion as a corporation. And as a corporation, it has shareholders like any other corporation. And what really shocks many people when they understand this structure is that who owns the Fed? Who are the shareholders in the Fed? Federally chartered commercial banks. If you're a bank here in the U, a commercial bank here in the U.S., you are a shareholder and owner of the Fed. And yet the Fed supervises those banks. Many people see that as a potential conflict of interest. The other thing of note is Fed stock actually pays a very attractive 6% dividend. This is a very attractive dividend paying stock. But it has limited liquidity, and I should explain a little bit. This is not stock that is available to you and I as investors. The st Fed stock is only available to commercial banks. So if you are a commercial bank, you are an owner of the Fed. The other thing that makes this a little bit unique is normally, I'm sure as you know, when you have a share of stock, you get a voting right associated with that. In this Fed stock, the voting rights are to the shareholders, meaning a bank has one voting right irrespective as to how much stock they own. And a bank like Citibank owns a lot more Fed stock than a bank like KeyBank. Yet they both only have one voting right, and that makes it a little bit more unusual. So the structure of the Fed is misunderstood. It's not a part of the U.S. government. And that is different than other countries, for example. You know, some of you might be surprised to know that the Bank of England is also a corporation. Now that goes back to the 1600s, but in the 1980s, the U.K. government stepped in and bought all of that stock. So the Bank of England is also a corporation, but all of that stock is owned by the government, effectively making it a government agency. Understand that distinction between the government and the Fed, I think is important. You don't want elected officials making monetary policy. You want it to be independent. So the Fed today, the other thing I would like to point out is, we don't just have one Federal Reserve here in the U.S. Common misconception. There are 12 Feds here in the U.S., and each Fed appoints their own president, elects their own president. So the structure of the Fed is something that is greatly misunderstood. Now, in the next video coming up, we're going to talk about the rate-setting committee of the Fed, the FOMC. This is the power that sets monetary policy here in the U.S. And again, this too is greatly misunderstood. You hear the press talking all the time that the Fed raised interest rates here or lowered interest rates there. No, they didn't. The Fed itself doesn't affect interest rates at all. When we're talking about impacting the market and interest rates, we're talking about a committee of the Fed called the FOMC. And I would make you the argument, these are 11 of the most powerful people in the world because they set the rate policies here in the U.S. and monetary policy. So in our next video, we'll talk about the structure and the understanding and the tools that the FOMC uses today. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you on the next video.